Hey guys, Cindy Williams here, the Wanderlust CEO. Today we are talking about, wait for it, harmony of the seas. You guys, I literally just got off the ship yesterday. I have so many things to share with you. Um, and I'm going to tell you 10 things nobody is telling you about harmony of the seas. We're going to cover everything. What's the best show? What's the best dining? How to skip all the lines? Do you really need to dress up? What were my two favorite activities? How was the spa? We'll get to that. Is there enough things? Are there enough things for your children to do? And the number one ultimate thing you have to do to have the best time ever on Harmony of the Seas, we are talking about it on the show today. So if that sounds fun, keep on watching. and ring that notification bell on our YouTube channel. We bring you amazing content on travel destinations all over the world. And listen, I've been doing this for almost 30 years since I was 19 years old. I was a baby when I started in the industry and things still surprise me and I'd love to share them with you. And that's what, what we do here at Tripsy Travel and on the channel. And I am so excited to share, oh my gosh, so many things about this little guy here, right? Um, by the way, this is like an actual model you can buy at the gift shop and it will show you uh, like everything. It even has like, I don't know, hang on, let me see if it'll focus for you. Maybe not. There we go. <laughs> it's going to show you the water slides. It literally has like the Central Park, all of the cool stuff, all of the cool stuff that you can find on the ship. But anyway, that's my little um, fun uh, prop for today, if you will. But I have so many great things to share with you. We're going to get right into it. So first things first, let's talk about number 10. We're going to do a countdown 10 to 1, all the stuff that you need to know. First thing to know is cruises are booking up again like crazy. We have been so busy at our agency, and I can tell you firsthand from being on the ship last week, the ship was full. I actually asked a couple staff members and they told me they were running at about 70% occupancy, um, which is almost 5,000 people for the Harmony of the Seas in terms of how many people they can fit on that ship. It's around 4,700, 4,800 um, in terms of passengers, not even including the crew that's also around on the ship. but. Your, my best advice for you is please book your cruises very early. And if you can book on off season, that will help you a ton. Less people is always like a more enjoyable experience. But when I get down to number one, I'm going to tell you how to have the best experience ever, no matter when you go. So stay tuned for that as well. So um, if you don't want to go though, when it's really busy and the pool deck's not just swarming with people and there's, you know, <laughs> a lot of bodies on the ship, try to book off season. That's a great, great tip. And early book your book early, because that way you might have an opportunity to use the Royal Caribbean program where you can do the Royal up and maybe bid on a suite and things like that. Um, all right, but that's number 10. Number nine, what is the best show? We get this question all the time. What are the shows? What are the best shows to go to? So I really try to do a lot of due diligence on this for you guys while we're on the ship. They had Greece going in the Royal Theater, which is kind of like the big theater that they have. They had two ice shows happening in Studio B. They had comedy shows, jazz shows. But the number one, my number one favorite thing was a show called The Fine Line and it's in the Aqua Theater. You may have heard about the Aqua Theater. So, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, amazing show. Just visually impressive. It has divers that dive from these tall platforms into this little tiny pool. Like it looks like, oh my gosh, I might watch someone die today. That's how like thrilling the show is. Then they have aerialists that are kind of floating around above your head. You really feel like you're part of the show. In fact, if you sit in the first few rows, you are gonna get wet, they tell you that. So it's an outdoor venue. It was so beautiful. The time of day that we went, I think it was like the eight or nine, eight o'clock shows because the sun was literally like setting in the background. So it was just a gorgeous, gorgeous setting. Breeze was going on. It's even though it's the middle of July when I'm filming this, it was not too hot. We had a nice drink. They had people coming around giving drinks. So fantastic show. I loved it. Make sure you get that. And you do have to reserve your shows. Make sure you're reserving those early. You can book them either on the app or you can book them as soon as you get on the ship. So I highly recommend that you do that. All right, let's talk dining. We did a lot of eating for y'all last week. Obviously, I mean, 
I wouldn't have gone out to eat so much, but I have to do it for you guys. So we tried all of the fine dining places, like the specialty dining, if you will. We didn't go to the main dining room once, so I honestly cannot even comment on that food. Uh, we did stop at the Windjammer, which is kind of like a buffet, and wasn't a big fan of that. I will say that going in from a dining perspective. That's the one where you can kind of go anytime, and it's buffet style. I just felt like the quality of food wasn't the greatest, um, but specialty dining, oh my gosh, it was fantastic. And um, we tried lots of different uh, restaurants that they have. They have Chops, they have Jamie's uh, Italian, they have is it Park 150? Forgive me if I'm not remembering that correctly. It's something 150, Central 150, but anyway. But we tried all of them for you guys. We even had the sushi slash hibachi. Wonderland was really cool. But food-wise, I have to say our number one pick was Jamie's Italian. And you guys, my standards for Italian food are like up here. I have an aunt who is Italian. And so like I grew up on like authentic, delicious, fantastic Italian food. And so I really have never been to an Italian restaurant where I, it just was like knocked my socks off until Jamie's. I wasn't even looking forward to Jamie's, to be honest. I was looking forward to like the Steakhouse and Wonderland and some of the other ones I had heard about. And it was such a surprise that everything from the cocktail selections, wine selections, the actual food. They home make the pasta on the ship every single day. And you can order like a little tiny half portion alongside an entree. And I almost didn't order pasta because I was like, eh, it's pasta, right? <laughs> but she's like, no, you have to try the pasta. And we got a little bit of the bolognese. Oh, it was so good. So I really wish we would have booked Jamie's twice, but we didn't get around to doing that. But that is my number one recommendation for food. So don't miss Jamie's. It books up super fast. So please book that in advance or the minute you get on the ship, try to get a reservation for that. And also, if you don't know already, they do have dining packages that you can pre-purchase. We were on a pre-purchase dining package and that really helped a lot to cover the cost. And we'd already paid for it, so we didn't have to pay anything extra. We didn't have any upcharge. Now, if you don't do the dining package, you can pay a set upcharge. You'll wanna check in the Royal Caribbean app to see what those current ones are or ask your travel agent or if we're booking for you, you can ask us and we'll be happy to share that with you as well. All right, next question. Or next tip, I should say. Next question you might have. How was the spa? Now this is the thing, there's not a ton of content out there about the spa on the Vitality Spa on the Harmony of the Seas because I was really like, I'm gonna go to the spa and I did. I'll probably make some more videos and elaborate in more detail. I actually had three treatments at the Vitality Spa. I had a 90 or 100 minute Swedish massage. I had te the teeth whitening treatment <laughs> also had um, a blowout done, but I added the carotene treatment because if you do three spa services, you can do this discount, or at least this, was, this is what's running right now. If you do three, then you can get a percentage off of each service. So your least expensive one is 10% off, your second one is 20% off, and your third one is 30% off. So I got all three of those done to try them out, probably again have another video to go into more detail. Um, but I have to say, the spa was okay. Like I am really a spa nerd. I love spas. The massage was really amazing. Like the masseuse that did my massage was great. I had like, I sprained my ankle a week before we went onto the ship. And because I was babying my ankle for a week, my calf muscle was like, it was like so tight. And she even said, she was like, did you go to, to Coco K with this yesterday? This muscle feels like it's going to snap. And even though it was supposed to be like more of a light, like relaxing massage, she was like getting in there. And by the time I walked so much better by the time I got out. So the massage, the actual masseuse was great. Now, the thing that I don't, don't love or appreciate about the spas, and this is pretty much all cruise ships. So there's that. But the upsell happening is real. There's other videos about that out there. The day I had my massage, all the systems went down. So I didn't get upsold on anything. They didn't try to sell me anything extra at the end of the treatment because they were literally getting out pieces of paper and writing like, what's your name and cabin number? Because the systems were down. They didn't even know what was happening. 
But when I had my teeth done, they were like, oh, and look, they, like the guy comes out in the white, you know, med- like a, a medical kind of uh, jacket. And he's like, we're going to uh, do this treatment. And they're showing you the little teeth and it's going to lift you three shades. And he puts it against his white jacket. It's a big or- ordeal. So I'm like, great. That's amazing. So we do the treatment. I think it was like 150 or 160, somewhere around there price wise. And that's like less than it is at my dentist's office. So I'm like, well, let me just do that while I'm there. I've been busy, I haven't had time to do it in a while. So I did the treatment. What I liked about the whitening um, that they have is that there was no pain. Like sometimes you get your teeth whitened and what he told me is that like there's three layers to your teeth and it doesn't go to the third one. So I had no pain or no tooth sensitivity afterwards. So I really liked that. But the upsell at the end, they're like, okay, we just made your teeth look great. But if you want to upkeep this, you really need to buy this aftercare thing. And it's 250 bucks. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you kidding me? So it's really, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, they don't tell you that necessarily at the beginning, but at the end, they're like, you really need this thing. And it's kind of a, you know, like you should buy this or else kind of situation. So not, it wasn't, wasn't a lot of pressure I'll say, but it was just like, oh, I got to sit through a sales pitch at the end of this treatment. Right. So my last treatment was, I just wanted to do a blowout. We were going for a nice dinner. It was like one of the last nights. And so I got a blowout done and then I had the carotene treatment. That was really great. I actually could feel the difference in my hair. Like I felt like it was like thicker and it definitely like they use the heat iron and uh, to flatten it and, or they seal in the treatment. Um, the only thing is you should know you're not supposed to wash your hair for at least two days or even get it wet. Um, so if you're planning on swimming or you like to swim and you like to get your hair wet, I never go into the water when I swim, particularly like, you know, out in the world, I'll maybe do it at my, at my home, but um, I pretty much always put my hair up anyway. So that, that was fine for me, but you should know that in case you're a swimmer, or, you know, you like to shower every day. They're like, don't get your hair wet for two days. But again, at the hair salon, and what cracked me up, the same person that did my teeth treatment was the person who did my hair. And like, so now he, he didn't have the medical jacket on anymore. And now today he had the hairdresser thing on. It's like the same person. I'm like, oh no, I hope he doesn't try to sell me something again. But of course they were, you know, he gave me, I got a great lecture about my age and how my hair's losing density and I should buy this $200 thing to kind of put through my hair. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, let me think about it. And he was like, okay, no problem. So again, not high pressure, but just like, oh, I hate that that's part of the experience when you're trying to go to the spa and just connect and relax. But I feel like all going through the treatment, they're building up to what I'm, they're going to try to sell me at the end. And I get it. They probably make extra commission. They make bonuses but I'm not there for that. So just a little (laughs) pre-warning on the spa, proceed with caution. If that kind of stuff makes you nervous, or if you feel like you're going to get sucked in or not be able to say no, it is what it is. Um, so number six tip that I'm going to give you guys or question you might have, is there really enough stuff for my kids to keep them busy? Yes. Oh my gosh. There was more than I even thought. We actually brought our 12 year old son and he had a fantastic time. They have sports courts. He's like an athlete. So he sports courts, water slides. Um, now here's one thing he was bummed about. They have a beautiful gym on the Harmony of the Seas, but you have to be 13 and you have to sign a waiver. He was like three weeks away from being 13. Oh, we were so bummed because he is an athlete. Like we, he has a trainer and he plays football. And so like he was super bummed he couldn't go to the gym. But just know that kids ages, if that's important to you, if you have a, a kind of a teenager almost that, uh, that likes to use the gym, that might be a thing, but they also had an arcade. He loved the arcade. There's the boardwalk area and there's the little, like the, what do they call it? The Zolar guy that tells the fortunes, like from the big movie. Do you remember the big movie where the kid gets a fortune and all the things? So he got to do that and he thought it was really cool. There's also the ultimate abyss. All right, this little, let's see if we can see it. The little purple, see the little purple giant water slides at the bottom of the boat there? You guys, it goes from the top of the ship to all the way to the bottom of the ship. It is a dry slide. You slide down on like a mat. And how many stories is that? I mean, it's like all the, almost all the decks of the ship until you get below deck. So it was a pretty epic slide. <laughs> that was pretty cool. And they're also, my son thought this was funny, we got one of the cringy cruise photos. So you got to mark that off of your list if you're going on a cruise. So we got, yes, we got the cringy cruise photo. That was a ton of fun and a memento uh, of me and my son. 
So that was a that was a lot of fun, but tons of stuff for your kids to do. They are gonna love it. And honestly, they're he's like, can we go here? Can we go there? Can we do this today? It was almost like, hey, slow your roll. I want to do some stuff on vacation too. So you won't have to worry about that as well. Um, all right, so I wanna we're gonna do top five next. Before we do that, I wanna remind you guys. There's a lot of things to know about a cruise. It's really important if you're not already using a travel agent, you want to think about reaching out to a, your local travel agent or you can work with us at Tripsy Travel. Another thing that's important about working with us is every single one of our travel advisors that works on our team is careers on vacation certified. That means they are certified travel agents. They have been trained. They know exactly what they're doing. They're skilled. They know the best deals. And we work with all of the major cruise lines and we would love to help you with your cruise because there's a lot in prep, there's a lot in picking the right one, getting the, the best value for your vacation investment and helping you with the process because I haven't, I hadn't cruised in a while and I almost forgot like, oh yeah, I gotta do this. Oh yeah, I have to do that. Oh yeah, we have to do this. There's a lot of things to remember. A travel agent is going to help you with that. Whether you're using us or someone else, you know, all the love, just show the travel industry the some love. You do not, you pay a travel agent the same um, as, as you would if you're booking do them directly, right? So you don't get as much service if you're booking directly than you would if you're using a travel agent. All right, so let's get to that top five. I know that's what you're waiting for. What were the best two things that we did? Now this was kind of hard and I might even give you a third one, but the number one favorite thing that we did is we rented a private cabana on Coco K. This, there's a perfect day at Coco K. We were on the Eastern Caribbean plus Coco K seven night cruise out of Port Canaveral. Um, and we kind of went back and forth because we're not really like hang out at the beach all day people. I'm more like, go, 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 take a million pictures, do all the things. But my husband's like, let's just do that to like really have an island day and enjoy. And I'm so glad that we did. And there's different price levels for the cabanas. They run anywhere from around six, 700 bucks in low season, all the way up to $1,500 or even higher. They have ones that have, you can fit like 20 people in. Ours was just kind of like the basic cabana. We paid around $1,200 for it for the day, which seems like a lot, but we're going during high season and we booked kind of late. And so there wasn't a lot left. It honestly was the only one left. And we knew we wanted to make a YouTube video about it to show you guys. So we're gonna show you some more content on that later too, coming later on the channel. But for right now, I do wanna say that that ended up being one of our most relaxing days. We got a beautiful, and they didn't know we had a YouTube channel, right? Like we got a beautiful one right at the end. We had no neighbors. We got a beautiful view. You can see the ship. There's a protected area to swim in at Coco Cay. And it was just really enjoyable. You, they have an attendant that comes and will get all of your drink requests. All of the food that you order is completely complimentary. The cabana was also stocked with water. It had electricity. It had a shaded area. I'm super fair skinned, so I burned super easy. So it was really nice. And I also had, remember I had sprained my ankle the week before. And so I wasn't walking around and running around as much as I did. And it was really nice to just have a comfy seat where I could put my foot up and kind of let it rest for a little bit and then scoot back and forth into the into the ocean all day. I mean, it was a phenomenal relaxing day. They also have a tram system that takes you around the island. So like I had a mobility issue on this particular trip. Normally we may have walked it and just said, hey, let's walk to, cause we were in the chill island section, but they're like, that's like stop number four. You might want to take the tram. So we did, we took the tram from the cruise ship to uh, Coco Cay, and then they have another tram that will take you to each stop all the way around the island, depending on which section you want to hang out in for the day, or you can hang out part of the day in one, and then you can visit another. They also have um, like uh, basketball there. They have the big balloon that you can take up. Now the balloon wasn't flying the day that we were there because it was too windy. So we were kind of bummed about that. But if that's an, uh, it looks really cool. I'm afraid of heights, but I, I honestly would have done it if it was running for the day just to get the pictures because I feel like you'd be able to get such a cool view from up there. Um, so that's something to think about. But cabana was number one. The second coolest thing that no one tells you to do, but ended up being our favorite thing was to the art auction. We loved the art auction and no upselling happened either. I was like, this is fantastic. You'd think that's where the upselling would be. There was upselling happening all through the cruise, but not so much at the art auction. It was a really nice experience. We went on the very last day of uh, the cruise 
And we just kind of wanted to go to see what it was about. We, uh, If you have been following me for a while, you know we just bought our house here in Orlando. So we're still in the process of decorating and travifying it and all those things, making it all travel as, as we do, similar to our house in Texas. But point being is we were kind of like, yeah, let's go check it out. So they give you, I brought some, I brought some things to show y'all. They give you a bid card with a lot of terms and conditions like this is a real auction the sales are final if you bid on it but what i loved that they did at the art auction is they had these mystery things that you could buy so they would say like we have three giant pieces of art and they didn't show you what they were and they said we're going to let you get it for 500 dollars if you bid 500 dollars but because it's a mystery if you end up hating it when we turn it around you can say i don't want it so they had two or three mystery auctions that they did and we bid on the first one and it was three thomas kincaid beautiful, large pieces of art. And I was like, holy crap, we got all three of those for 500 bucks. It was amazing. And what we were also able to do, because you go to an appointment later to say, man, I don't want it, or yes, I do want it. What I was, we were able to do is I didn't really, I love Thomas Kincaid and his art. I think it's gorgeous, especially the stuff he does. It's a Disney style, but I would rather have one really nice one. So what we were able to do is we swapped out the three that we got for the mystery. And then we upgraded into, because it was more of like the end entry level kind of Thomas Kincaid in terms of the paper they printed on. And I wanted the one that was like where it really looks like it was painted and it's more on a canvas. So we swapped in the three and we got one really nice one, but it's more of that higher quality that we're going to put in our house here. And I'm so excited. So it takes like 12 weeks, but I'll show you guys on the channel. If you don't, by the way, if you don't know already follow my Cindy Williams Wanderlust CEO channel, definitely follow that one too. That's where I do all the house updates and behind the scenes and what it's like to be a travel agent, all those things. But the art show you guys was so cool. Even my son loved it. We gave him a little budget and he got to buy two pieces of artwork. They do have things that are like 40 bucks or 50 bucks. And he bought like a little um, Tweety Bird sketch. And then he bought one that was like a wolf and it was just a cool experience. And my, hu my um, husband uh, and I love art. My son is an artist. And so he really thought that was super cool. So I know it seems lame, but it totally wasn't. It was like one of the best things we did. <laughs> okay, so if that's your jam, check it out. All right, number four, do you really need to dress up? Oh my gosh, you guys are gonna love the answer to this question. Again, we have not cruised in a while and we've never been on an Oasis class ship. This was our first Oasis class, second biggest uh, cruise ship in the world. And uh, we're following the rules. We're rule followers. I totally packed way more clothes than I needed. We go to the first night. We went to Chops was the first restaurant. My, I mean, my husband, he's a rule follower. He had the jacket on and the tie and the, you know, my son, we had him all decked out. I'm wearing a nice dress, not formal, but just like super nice, right? And we walked in and it's supposed to be, that's how you're supposed to dress. They literally put it in the packet of information. We walked in and like, people are like wearing polo shirts. I saw a guy in sandals and shorts and I'm like, what is happening? We didn't, and it was kind of a relief because my husband's like, well, good, I'm not going to dress up if no one else is dressing up the rest of this cruise. But I felt like we were overdressed, even though we were like literally the only people in the restaurant. So no, the dress code is definitely not enforced in any way, shape or form. Um, you know, my son for the rest of the trip pretty much wore shorts and we made him wear like a collar, like a little polo shirt, but <laughs> we didn't make him like put a tie on or anything like that. And I would say formal nights kind of like, if you want to participate in it, we dressed nicer on formal night, but we did not bring like super formal attire, like no tuxes, anything like that. I did see people though, that definitely were decked out and they were getting some of those cool <laughs> cruise slash cringy cruise photos, whatever you want to call them. And look, a lot of people love those type of photos and they put them on different backgrounds. So that can be a really fun thing for people. If that's your jam, totally go for it. I would say anything goes, you do what you're comfortable with dressing wise. All right, next one is how do you get free ice cream? Okay, check this out. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to take the elevator up to deck 16. Okay. I want you to port side and I want you to go towards the back of the ship. Was it back of the ship? Yes, back of the ship. So you're going to go to the back of the ship and on the port side there's going to be a guy or a gal there every day and they're going to get you an ice cream cone so i want you to get your ice cream cone 
And then as you're eating your ice cream cone, I want you to continue to walk around the back of the ship. You're gonna see the flow rider, which is super cool. Your kid can check that out. You're gonna see the ultimate abyss. You're gonna see the sports courts and you're walking around, walking around. And before you know it, you're gonna be on the starboard side of the ship and there's gonna be another guy there serving ice cream. And then you can get your second ice cream cone. You guys, I told you this video was gonna tell you the stuff nobody else is gonna tell you. So get those ice cream cones. I tested that for you because, you know, market research, you guys are safe. No one's gonna judge you for getting two ice cream cones, especially if you follow my plan of port side to starboard, okay? <laughs> so just to illustrate, you are gonna go here, you're gonna go here, deck 16, and you're just gonna walk around and go there. Two ice cream cones. 15 minutes, good. And by the way, the ice cream cones are like super tiny. Go over to Instagram, you can kind of see a picture of it. It's like, it's like a trial size one for sure. So no one will judge you for having two. All right, next thing. Speaking of port and starboard side, which side do you wanna be on? This is something nobody thinks about. If you don't use a travel agent, you're literally just pulling up decks and you're like, oh, let me find the room I want and pick one. And a lot of times you don't think about like, especially like our, our clients who go to Alaska, if you're on one side of the ship, you're going to see more than if you're on the other side of the ship, dependent on the itinerary that you're on. So that's one of the things that I always think about. And we were on the port side and I'm so glad that we did port side. And again, we were on the Eastern Caribbean plus Coco Cay seven night. You have to really pay attention to the itinerary. Again, ask your travel agent, which side of the ship is going to afford me the best views because a lot of times they can give you feedback on that. When we were in port, we literally had beautiful ocean or island views versus if I, we were on the flip side of the, the ship where everybody gets off the ship, it literally is like looking at the cement port and sometimes the views are not as nice that direction. So we really enjoyed port side. So if you're going on that itinerary, I would highly recommend that. All right, number one thing that you need to know to skip those lines. Remember, I promised you I was gonna teach you how to skip the lines, but not just skip the lines, a bunch of other stuff you need to know about. We were in a grand suite. A grand suite is the entry level suite in Sky Class where you still get all of the benefits for being in the suite class. And the benefits are immense. Let me walk, them, walk you through a few of them. The first one is you are literally going to skip the line when you get to boarding the ship. We showed up and my husband, my husband hates lines. He was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna take, and then he's thinking about me because I sprained my ankle and I'm like, we're like, ah, trying to do stuff quickly, right? So he's like, this line's gonna be like an hour long. There's so many people here. And we got to the, we got to uh, Port Canaveral super early because we were trying to get on the ship as soon as possible. And we walked up and we said, I said, hey, we're in sweet class. Am I in the right spot? Because I knew there was like probably a special line. And he goes, oh, you're in sweet class? Yes. And he opened up and he goes, you go to the front of the line. And I was like, whoa. So we literally only had two people in front of us. Everybody else had hundreds of people in front of them. So I think probably, I would guess maybe a 45 minute line for everyone else. We literally walked right up there. We showed our vaccination information. We showed our passports and then they send you inside to kind of go through security. You have to show your passports and your vaccination one more time and they will issue you a CPAS card, which is where you're able to scan and it shows all of your documents connected. It shows everything. Don't lose your CPAS card, right? That's what has all of your information. So it took us literally less than 15 minutes to do that entire process, getting in, showing all the documentations, checking our vaccination information, checking our COVID tests, all that information that you have to do on the cruise ship. And then boom, we arrived and walked right onto deck five, which is where they were boarding us for the day. And there was a gentleman there and he said, hello, do you, do you need help with where to go? He could tell we were like, wow, where do, what do we do first? And I said, we're in suite class. I said, I said, are the rooms, are the cabins ready? Or, you know, where can we go? And he said, the cabins will be ready around one o'clock. And at this point it's probably around noon. And he said, but you guys are suite class. He said, so go up to 17, go to Coastal Kitchen. You guys can get lunch, you can have some drinks. And that was amazing because the, everybody was loading on and it was like crowds, crowds, crowds. And I remember the ship was about 70%. And there was a lot of people in that space all trying to figure out where to go. The, none of the cabins are ready yet. So everybody's kind of, you know, uh, in, the, in that similar area of like, where do I go? What do I do? So we went up to 17. 
we had a, the minute we got there, it was just a relaxed lunch, three course lunch for dinner. It was phenomenal. So we just got to take a breath for a minute and they have the concierge up there to go, hey, Mrs. Williams, do you want any particular shows? Do you want any particular dinner? And they make any adjustments. The other thing to know though, when you are in suite class, they emailed us three days before we got on the ship and they said, would you like us to make dining or show reservations? So I had emailed everything. I already had a list of everything that we wanted, just like we do for our clients. We help them kind of with that process of like, get this, get this, do this one twice if you're on the dining package, that kind of stuff. So I was ready. We had most of our stuff, but I hadn't booked my spa appointments yet. So they helped me book those couple of appointments that we wanted to do and we were golden. So we got all of that done and then they made the announcement. They said, hey, your room is ready, your cabin's ready, you can go ahead and proceed. We were able to go right to our cabin and boom, we were in there right at one o'clock. So that was fantastic. Also, um, side note, you have to do your mustard drill, but the great part about that is everything's on your phone now, so you don't have to, like in the old days, we all had to go up and put the life jackets on. <laughs> it was a whole thing. You don't have to do that anymore. All right, so back to sweet benefits. Um, free room service so you can get free room service that came in handy because there were a couple nights where my son was like i don't want to do another fancy dinner mom and dad can i just stay home and i want to like be on my ipad and so we would order him room service and we were able to go out and use our dining package that was a nice feature as well um another thing that i think is funny so um my husband likes to sleep a little bit like elevated right like he just is like the, how he sleeps most comfortably so and i i'm a pillow hog like i love to hug some pillows when i fall asleep so when the guy came and he, they leave a little thing and they're like hey do you want special pillows we have goose pillows we have this kind of pillow it's like three different kinds of pillows i don't remember all the types i just remember goose because that's like my favorite and um i said i know this is gonna sound crazy i said but can i get three more pillows there's already two so he's like you want five pillows i'm like yeah my husband's like i need I need like three more too. He's like, so you guys want 10 pillows? They're like, no problem. He's like, okay. So if having a ton of pillows is your jam, definitely check that out. But also like the steward was so amazing. I don't know if like they have a different set of people that work in sweet class or not, but he was phenomenal. Two more things I want you to know about sweet class. One is there's also a reserved area of the pool deck where you can go, where you don't have to be in the crowds. You're literally just there with other people who are in a suite. They have a nice spa up there, meaning like a hot tub spa, and they have a bar up there. They have lots of chairs, lots of cozy chairs. That is really nice because even though they were only at 70% occupancy, you guys, there were so many people on the pool deck. I only went to the pool one day and I was like, I don't think I'm going to do this again. It was like a fight to find the right chair if I was looking on the main deck and there were so many people in the pools. So having that reserved area that only the sweet class can go to, I thought was a really, really nice touch and was just phenomenal. Um, the other thing I want to say is having access to coastal kitchen i mentioned it when we got on the ship but having access to coastal kitchen is a big deal you can have breakfast and lunch at coastal kitchen and again because we had compared kind of the wind jammer which is more of that super buffet experience up at the coastal kitchen they have grab and go so like my son is like just give me some yogurt and fruit and i'm good and he's done but if you want to have a sit down breakfast they have a nice it's a really light breakfast like i had french toast but it's literally just one piece and then some fruit right but it's experience of sitting down having coffee and the view from the coastal kitchen is literally from the best spot in my opinion on the ship it's just a gorgeous that and wonderland have the best views from a dining perspective but loved 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 coastal kitchen the other thing that i really loved is the day that we went to saint kitts i came back and i was so like exhausted and i was hot because i'd been walking it was so hot outside that day i literally came back on the ship and i had gone by myself because my husband and son were doing other stuff that day i just hit 17 i'm like i'm going straight to lunch and i just was able to skip that buffet experience sit down for a minute take a breath and it's just it's so chill up there. There's, it's not a ton of people. It's a very relaxed feel. They all know your name. They're like, hello, Mrs. Williams. Like they know you by like the third day. That was pretty phenomenal. And one of the other cool things on the very last day, I have to say we went up to Coastal Kitchen just to get coffee because we were getting up so early and my son wanted to get some of the grab and go stuff. But I was like, the minute we went out to the elevators, there were like people and like everyone trying to get off the ship. It took us like six stops to get up. And I told my son, I said, oh my gosh, I hope we're not late getting back to uh, my husband because he's waiting for us to get back. But I'll tell you what they did. 
the guy came and he said, hang on, Mrs. Williams. And he said, what floor are you going to? I said, we're going down to seven. He scanned his badge and he goes, now you have a nonstop flight down to seven. So he used his service badge and it sent us from 17 all the way to seven while everybody else was kind of like fighting for for uh, elevator. So that really helped. That probably saved us about 15 minutes that morning, which was really key when you're getting off the ship and our transfer is waiting for us, right? Last thing on sweet service, getting off the ship was just as easy as getting on. They have the sweet guests kind of uh, put to one area and they have special lines for us to go through and then boom, so quick off the ship. So guys, uh, this that's my top 10 things. If you got a tip that you have not seen on any other video, I watched so many YouTube videos before going on Harmony of the Seas. So I wanted to share stuff that's not out there. Please hit that like, subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you get uh, alerted when we have new content. But if you got a good tip, that really helps get the video out there and we can share our message with other people as well. And again, if you want us to book your uh, cruise, your next cruise, especially if you're looking at that sweet class, which you get all of those perks, visit us at traveltripsy.com. We'd be honored to help you with your next vacation. And guys, I will see you on the next one. I wish you so much love and I will see you out there as you're traveling the world. Bye guys, we'll see you next time. Come take my hand, I will walk with you. I will let go till you say so. There isn't anything I wouldn't do. Wanna make sure that you understand. You're the one who gives my life color. There is no one other. Hey guys, Cindy Williams here. If you like that last video, make sure you check out all of the other content on our channel. And if you want to follow along and travel with me around the world and see how I run my amazing travel brands and get some great tips on how to grow your own, make sure you check out that other content. I'm going to drop a couple videos here. Click those links. I'll see you next time. Bye guys.